Keith Myers. I've uh, put together a YouTube page that is a, a collection of lessons on the combination of Wing Chun and Western Boxing. This was intended primarily for my own students as a reference to the look back upon, but I'm making this public for anybody else that's interested and wants to follow along, so I thought an introduction to what we were doing would be appropriate. So why would anybody want to combine Wing Chun and boxing? Well, primarily because I've been involved in Wing Chun for many years. I have a, a pretty solid background in three different families of Wing Chun, in Ip Man Wing Chun, in Kulo Pinsun Wing Chun, and in William Cheong's traditional Wing Chun. I love Wing Chun, and I also really admire and like boxing. And I've done some boxing in the form of Panatukan and other versions of kind of martial boxing. And I like both. So it's like, where can these two worlds meet? That's one of my primary motivations. One of my other motivations is when you see people trying to spar with their Wing Chun in kind of a mixed setting where they're sparring people doing other kinds of martial arts, they don't tend to do well if they can't close in right away. Wing Chun's specialty is close range fighting within an arm's distance so we can trap and, and do our thing. If you can't get to that distance, you got a problem. So, so many Wing Chun people trying to spar that can't really they either close to that distance right away and start throwing punches, or if they have trouble getting that distance, if they're fighting a fighter that is very good at staying away from them, they try to, to do something and it ends up looking like sloppy kickboxing. So, if you're going to end up doing that as by default, why not train that so you do it well? That's one of my other motivations. I think boxing can bring a lot to Wing Chun. And, and in a sense kind of modernize it or update it for the modern world and the way fighting is done today. And in turn, Wing Chun can bring a lot to Western boxing. So, what is boxing going to bring to Wing Chun? Like I, like I just mentioned, boxing has a very good long-range game. And there is a difference between having an actual long-range game and just having a strategy in place from closing for closing from long-range to your chosen short-range or a strategy for surviving at long range just long enough that you can close in and do your close range game. Having a long range game means you can conduct the entire fight successfully from long range. And boxing can do that. Boxing has very mobile footwork, it has very evasive body movements, it can move in and out quickly, has longer punches when it needs to have it. You see boxers all the time that can dance around like Muhammad Ali and finish somebody with ever close, without ever closing in close enough where they would be into a chi sour or a clinch kind of range. That's what boxing can bring to Wing Chun. Boxing has a lot more realistic training. You know, boxers get in there and they mix it up from day one. Too many Wing Chun people do just forms in chi sao. So, another thing that boxing brings is this realistic training format where you're going to put on the gear and you're going to mix it up right from the beginning. So you get used to punches coming at you. You know what it is to cover. You know what it is to defend. You know what it is to control distance back and forth. That's an important thing if Wing Chun is going to be very effective in a sparring, free, for, free fighting format. Okay. Again, another thing that bo bringing kind of boxing into the mix is it prevents what I call some martial arts incest. Too many Wing Chun people, they train their thing, but they're only always training against another Wing Chun guy in class. And since Wing Chun is so specialized with very narrow straight punches, they're not really dealing with wider kind of punches that you're going to encounter from almost anybody else when you do any free sparring. And so your Wing Chun partner tries to simulate it, tries to do some kind of crappy boxing punch or wide loopy punches, and it gives the Wing Chun guy a false sense of his effectiveness simply because his training partner doesn't know how to throw those kind of punches or those kind of kicks. So by at least by having trained some boxing within the Wing Chun class, you've got a training partner now that can throw something that is closer to an actual boxing punch, and so your Wing Chun guy gets a better idea whether his method is actually going to work. So it kind of prevents this inbreeding where you're only training against another Wing Chun person. Okay, so then what does Wing Chun bring to Western boxing? One of the things you see a lot too many boxers do is they're very good at throwing punches at that middle range, but then when you get in close to close range, they end up tying up in a clinch, throwing a few short punches and jumping away, or trying to push the other guy away, or just covering until they can get away. The one thing that Wing Chun can bring to boxing now is those 
those contact reflexes developed in Chi Sao and other drills that allow you to, when you're in close, to, to deflect and flow and do multiple punches and tie up and trap and do all these kind of trapping hands and punching things without actually clenching and end up in, ending up in a relative stalemate. The other thing that Wing Chun brings to boxing is boxing is, is mostly a sport. People aren't training it as a martial art very widely. Well, adding that Wing Chun element to the training turns boxing into a martial art. It becomes a martial boxing. So it kind of takes it more out of that sport realm and makes the boxer start thinking more about, okay, how would this work on the street? How would I adapt this? How am I going to do this without gloves on, without hurting my fists, or, or just how am I going to make this work in a martial arts context? And doing a martial, a Wing Chun boxing blend solves that problem. Now, there's two spectrums where this can happen. You can have, essentially, classical Wing Chun that's added a few boxing elements. And this has been going on for years. You see this all the time. You see guys that when they're sparring, they're pretty much doing Wing Chun, but when the necessary arises and they're in close, they do a high cover. Okay, that's a little bit of a boxing element, whether they admit it or not. Or they're at that longer range and they're, not, and they're trying to close, and they end up doing some longer punches, essentially jabs and crosses. And they consider that part of their Wing Chun because you know, maybe their teacher is the one that started doing that and taught it to them. But that doesn't mean it didn't originally come from some boxing elements. Or they're doing their Wing Chun and they're be getting pressed and so they duck and they move and they have some upper body movement. And they say, well that's just natural, that's just common sense. Well yeah, sure it is. And it comes from boxing. Okay. On the other end of the spectrum, you can have somebody that's essentially doing Western boxing and then putting in a few Wing Chun elements, like taking the gloves off and using some pox sao traps and lop sao traps and maybe an occasional bong sao, but they're still essentially boxing. But they've got a pretty good Wing Chun influence going there. I'm trying to be somewhere in the middle where it's, not, it's no longer classical boxing and it's more than just boxing with a few Wing Chun things. What we're trying to do is create an actual Wing Chun boxing that kind of meets both in the middle. So we're still doing the forms but the forms have been adapted to a boxing biomechanic and an application more. Like I'll show you uh, the Wing Chun form done with boxing biomechanics and my boxing adaptations at some point. So that's where we're going with this. So if you're interested, please subscribe to the channel and follow along. And I'll say that I'm definitely not the first one to come up with this. Other people have been working on this for a long time. And if you check my YouTube channel, you look at my own subscriptions on that page, I'm subscribing to channels that contribute to my thought process that have influenced me, that are good feedback for anybody else that wants to work in this area. Number one amongst them being uh, Paul Rackman, who is in Brisbane, Australia, has been working on Wing Chun boxing for several years now and has some really good videos up. Another one is uh, Light Burley's 52 Blocks page. 52 Blocks is kind of a martial form of boxing already and has a lot of some of the 52 blocks are very similar to Wing Chun motions and so it crosses over very well and Light has also done some Wing Chun in his past and so he comments on how Wing Chun can blend with boxing so big shout out to Light Burley so check the page subscribe and follow along if you're interested I'll be putting up various lessons and again each lesson is kinda of meant like a little small chunk of material showing kinda of what we're working on as we go intended primarily for my guys to refer back to to kind of refresh their memory when I'm not around and when they're practicing on their own but also open to anybody else that wants to watch they kind of assume you already have a background in Wing Chun and that you're kind of adding a boxing element to your Wing Chun and I'm showing you how to adapt it because that's the approach I'm taking I've already been teaching my guys some Wing Chun and now we're going to kind of blend in this boxing element comments on any of the lessons are welcome as long as they you're asking questions or making positive comments, the trash talking, you don't know what you're talking about, you don't do good Wing Chun, you don't do good boxing, don't bother, please. Thank you.